Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to explore how simple it is to localize your app with Swift UI. Because today, if you want your app to achieve global success, of course, you need to make it global. One practical example of global success is Pokemon Go. The game was first launched in the US, Australia and New Zealand. Later it was localized into other languages such as French, German, Italian, Japanese and Spanish. And a study called the impact of app translations from this tome revealed that localizing iPhone app text resulted in considerably more downloads, about 128% more per country and additionally companies saw a 26% increase in revenue for each country added via app localization. And what's more interesting is these results were achieved within just one week of releasing a localized version of the app. And to show you how simple it is really to perform these localization steps, I've put together this registration form in SwiftUI, uh, nothing fancy. And just a quick note, if you're just getting started with SwiftUI at the moment, have a look at my new Udemy course to get a project-based introduction for just $12.99 in May. Just use the link in the video description below. If you're interested to learn more about this course, just watch the next one and a half minutes. If not, feel free to skip ahead to start with the tutorial. With SwiftUI, you will build better apps with less code. It makes app development a lot faster, simpler, and even works across all Apple platforms. SwiftUI gives you automatic support for dynamic type, dark mode, localization, and a lot more. I am Brian Edmund, and I've been working as a developer and trainer, especially in the Apple ecosystem, for almost a decade now. This course wants to bring you beyond the standard tutorials of displaying some local or web-based data in a list. It wants to address the questions that arise when creating an app with SwiftUI for the first time and cover topics that will enable you to understand app development with this new tool set and thus make you feel comfortable continue the journey of exploring SwiftUI on your own. I'm going to provide you with all the knowledge you need to create your own SwiftUI apps in no time. In our sample project, we'll build a cool user interface, use UIKit classes like the map view and SwiftUI. We are going to explore the most important property wrappers that are mostly responsible for the reactive magic of SwiftUI. We're also going to create custom shapes, animate them, store data, and so much more. Building this app from start to finish will give you a head start when working on your own projects with SwiftUI. To get the most out of this course, you should have a solid knowledge about Swift 5 and you should also know your way around Xcode. Please feel free to take a look around the course description and have a look at the preview videos. I'd be very happy to see you inside. And to show you how simple it is really to perform these localization steps, I've put together this registration form in SwiftUI. Uh, nothing fancy, we just have a navigation view um, with a navigation bar title, which is registration. In this form that we're going to use, we're using a text field or multiple text fields um, that have a placeholder text, username, first name, last name, and a sign up button um, that we could use for signing up. Um, and I'm just using this binding constant function here um, to supply something for this text argument here because this requires a binding and I didn't want to create one. So this is just a simple way to set up a constant value right here and still having these um, placeholder texts in place. Now to localize our international app here, um, all I really have to do is open up my project and also select my project. And what I can do here now is add an additional localization. So I have my base localization, I'm using English as a, a development language. And if I click on the plus icon here, I can choose from a lot of languages and I'm going to choose German for now. Um, so you would add all the languages that you support or that you plan to support right here. Um, and I'm going to choose that I'd also like to localize my launch screen storyboard since we're not really working with that. Um, we're going to ignore that for now, but we're going to um, do now two languages. We're going to support English and we're going to support German. So next step is to create a file that we can use to look up 
all these things that we need. So we need to localize these different parts of our user interface. We need to localize our title, our different text fields, and our button. And therefore, we're going to use a string file. So I'm going to press Command N on my keyboard, and I'm going to scroll down here a little bit until we find the string file. And I'm going to click Next, and traditionally I'm going to call this localizable dot strings, create that in my project. So that is the file where we are going to set up our um, string set and we're going to go through our application maybe step by step. So if we have a look, we, we need to think about registration. So uh, username, first name, last name, sign up. So let's add all of that to our localizable dot strings file. So we have registration and we have to make this a string. And we can now use an equal sign. And in English, this would also be, of course, registration. And then we just finish up this first entry with a semicolon. And then we're going to choose the next one here, this key actually um, for our first name, or no, we're going to start with username. Um, so this is also going to be username, so I can just copy that paste that. Uh, we're going to work with first name. Since we're using these as keys, I'm just using Pascal case here um, to make it a little bit simpler. Uh, this is also going to be first name with a white space, of course. Um, then we have last name, same thing. And we're going to have sign up, which is going to be sign up with a white space. And well, these are our English texts that we can use for localization. And now to also provide all of that in German, we're going to bring up our inspector on the right, click on our localizable file, and then also select our file inspector. And now the most important aspect of that is to actually press this simple button, which is called localize. Um, I uh, actually acknowledge that again with localize and clicking on my file again, I can now choose um, which languages I'd like to support. So now if I select uh, German as well, notice on the left that we're getting this little arrow here to actually bring up all of the localizable languages. So we have English, this is what we already set up, and we have German. Um, so it makes a lot of sense to actually first create um, a basic version of this file. You can extend that later of this key value pair file in localizable.strings. Um, but now that we have that in place, I'm going to um, actually select my German version. I've prepared um, the translations for these uh, different user interface elements. I'm just going to replace them right now. And then I'm going to um, actually build that real quickly to see that we didn't make any mistakes. And that should do it. So now with our localizable.strings file in place in both German and English, and it's actually the localizable string that our application is looking for, now that we're going to adapt our Swift UI construction or our UI construction right here. So instead of using simple strings here now, for example, for username, we're going to use a localizable string key. That's all there is to it. And we're going to initialize that with our keys that we have already used. So all that I really need to do now is to place a localizable string key in front of all of my user interface elements, rename them real quickly to fit the style, Pascal case style, um, that we used in our localizable file. And then we're done localizing our whole application in a matter of minutes. So here again, and for the last one that we have here, again using localizable string key or localized string key one last time, 
We need to build that, run that in the simulator. And then if we have, oh look, we need to bring in the simulator here. Um, then you can see we have our basic English implementation of our registration form. Now, to check if my German version also works, I'm going to press Command Shift H to go to the home screen. And then I'm going to hit settings. And in the general section, and then in the language and region section, we can change the iPhone language. And I'm going to switch to German here real quick. So this is going to take just a few seconds. And then I'm going to hit Command Shift H again. Going to bring up our application. We just made one simple mistake here with the sign up button. So I'm just going to remove my white space here um, for the button title. I'm going to run this in the simulator again. And as you can see, this immediately changed um, the title of our button in German. And again, if you want to switch languages, you're just going to press Command Shift H to go to the home screen and then change the language in the settings app back to English in my case. And then we can just switch to our application and have it in English again. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, very simple way to localize your application, make use of this, it's going to increase your revenue, it's increasing um, the customer satisfaction in different countries. That being said, I'd like to thank you for watching. Be sure to check out my new Swift UI course in the video description below. Subscribe to my channel to get notified about new tutorials. Like this video if you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.